Yes, and we're actually outside the Echo Building here in Aventuria. This is a luxury condominium. This is where police say a nine-year-old boy fell and died this afternoon. It was just after 3 p.m. that this happened. They say he actually fell from the 12th floor, which is equivalent to the roof. So that's what they're trying to figure out, how he got up there in the first place and why was he up there. Now, again, that call came in just after 3, I believe it was 3.07. They say a school resource officer ran from across the street from that charter school where they were working and tried doing CPR, but nothing worked. And they also had first responders come here uh, as well, trying to work on that boy for some time. They found him here at Peace Park. That is just steps uh, from this Echo building, this luxury condominium now. But Jesus said, suffer little children and forbid them not to come unto me. For of such is the kingdom of heaven. Are not two sparrows sold for a father, and one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father? But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear ye not therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. Devastation and shock through Brookline's Beacon Street neighborhood after a parent's very worst nightmare. A little girl, just five years old, loses her life in a tragic accident. The child was reportedly playing in a unit on the fourth floor and fell out the window. Investigators say it happened around 3.30 Monday afternoon and that there were adults in the home where this child was visiting. The child was actually in a, in a different unit other than their own, playing with some friends. There was nothing in the courtyard to break her fall. From that fourth story, she landed on concrete. There was a screen and the screen was found on the ground by the child. The little girl was rushed to Children's Hospital with serious injuries. Police confirmed hours later she tragically had passed away. An accident involving a little girl in Woodhaven, Queens. That girl rushed to the hospital after falling out of a second floor window. CBS 2's Brian Connie Bear is live at the scene with more on this breaking story. Brian? Yeah, Jessica, we're told that that little girl was playing with some other children near the second story window. In fact, we can show you. Take a look with me. It's that second story window on the side of this yellow two family house here on 77th Street. This happened just before 3 p.m. when the girl somehow managed to fall out, dropping about 20 feet feet down into an alleyway below. Now, some of the video of the scene is difficult to watch, but witnesses say the four-year-old victim was knocked unconscious and at one point was getting mouth-to-mouth -mouth from a man identified by neighbors as her grandfather. The panic-stricken man was visibly upset as firefighters and EMT teams, EMTs came to their aid. The girl, whose name has not been released, was put into an ambulance and taken to the hospital where police say she did, in fact, regain consciousness. That is the good news. One neighbor described the emotional scene. I was actually in the in my living room and I overheard uh, a gentleman crying and screaming, very distraught. So I came out to see what was going on, and I saw him holding his granddaughter, who was my next door neighbor, and uh, she was unresponsive at the time, and he was attempting to give her CPR. And about five or six minutes later, EMS showed up and uh, took it to the hospital. Police detectives have been here investigating just how this could happen. We're told there were adults inside the home at the time. That little girl is undergoing surgery at Jamaica Hospital, but we're told she is expected to survive this terrifying fall. Now, from the outside, it does not appear there are any child safety bars on the window where this accident happened. Reporting live from Woodside, Queens, Brian Connie Bear, CBS 2 News. Unfortunately, it's something that happens all too often. Children falling from windows and lanai's. The state health department estimates about 80 falls per year on Oahu alone. In 2011, a young child died after falling out of a window in military housing here on Oahu. And today, legislation was introduced on Capitol Hill to make windows in military homes safer for kids. This is new at nine. Jason and Amy English and their kids now live on the mainland. But back in 2011, Jason was stationed at Pearl Harbor and they lived on Aliamanu Military Reservation. Their son, Evan, died after falling out of a second floor window after the screen gave way. He was four and a half years old. Other families do not have to feel this grief and that they can plan a birthday instead of a funeral. Today, Congressman Mike Turner introduced Evan's Law. It would require the Department of Defense to equip military housing with window fall protection devices, such as window guards. This is a, a basic safety issue, and this is one where really we had gotten lax. Uh, all, we had been providing uh, the security and safety for families and their children in, in this housing. Uh, we stepped back from that. It was just a shock to our system that, that so many falls had happened and, and nothing had been done. 
Honolulu attorney Wayne Parsons represented the English family in the lawsuit. But after the lawsuit was over, we all worked together and I brought in some consultants to try and get changes in the codes and, and the laws. And now the Defense Department is looking at making a change that could protect children in all military family housing. Even though Evans Law is specifically for military housing, you may want to consider installing window protection devices if you have young children and live in a multi-story home, condo or apartment. It's also a good idea to keep furniture away from the windows. If possible, plant bushes or grass below windows to help buffer a fall and never depend on insect screens to prevent falls. I think the family wanted to see changes for safety of other military families so that nobody had to go through what they went through when Evan died. Most of the kids who fall out of windows are around Evan's age. It's a problem everywhere, but it's particularly a problem in Hawaii because it's warm here and people open up their windows and, uh, and so the, there's more of a possibility that could happen. Congressman Turner is working to include Evan's law in the National Defense Authorization Act. The House is expected to vote on it in the next couple of weeks and then it would head to the Senate. We will keep you posted. And as we mentioned, there are a number of falls from windows every year in Hawaii. In fact, only three months ago, a 20-month-old boy was injured after falling out of a third-floor window in Salt Lake. The window screen popped out after he leaned on it. And in 2013, a three-year-old boy was seriously injured after falling out of a fifth-floor window at an apartment building near the convention center. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus, and shall present us with you. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. Five-year-old boy is recovering tonight after falling seven stories from a window in a Quincy condo. The boy fell from a window after leaning on the screen, and amazingly, he suffered only minor injuries. He was taken to Children's Hospital in Boston. Jim Smith is live for us in Quincy tonight. Well, Katie, as we all know, situations like this one usually do not have a positive outcome, but tonight this one looks like the exception. This little boy fell a very long way, but survived. It is real, I like a miracle. I think his guardian angel was definitely there. People here at Captain's Cove Condo Complex in Quincy are calling it a miracle. A five-year-old boy falling through a window and tumbling seven stories. His fall was broken by the screen he fell through and a shrub. He's expected to be okay. Green kind of broke him, kind of floated into the tree, broke his fall. Ed O'Connor says this was one lucky boy. They neck braced him up there. He was screaming, so that was a good sign. Um, lungs were good, so that's all we kind of knew at the time. And then we found out that uh, he didn't even get a broken bone. It's like a miracle. I mean, I wish the kid was yelling out numbers because I would have grabbed a couple. The close call has residents here buzzing. That boy was very lucky. Um, because he fell into a tree with, and he had this, this screen under him, giving him a little bit of protection against scratches and the give that he got from falling into the tree rather than the ground further down. And more than one of them believe a higher power may have been at work. It was his blessed day. An angel caught him, the tree. That's what I feel. An angel caught him. And once again tonight, from what we can gather, this little boy is expected to be okay. Everybody is amazed. Shows the last moments of a 12-year-old Taiwanese schoolboy surnamed Xu, 
who just minutes later was thrown off a 13-floor building by his friends. According to police, at around 5 p.m., Xu went to an internet cafe to meet with a group of his friends, including a 23-year-old man surnamed Jiang and a 21-year-old man with the family name of Wang. Altogether, the six friends then went to the rooftop of one of the boys' apartment building to hang out. Xu reportedly got into a fierce argument with his two older friends. Jiang then allegedly covered the boy's head with a jacket and started beating the child's head. She cried out no several times, but as the argument escalated, the three other friends left the scene. Wang, however, reportedly hit Xu with a brick before running away. Jiang, who was significantly larger than a 12-year-old, finally lifted and threw the boy off the roof of the building. Xu died at the scene. The boy's older sister said yesterday she was heartbroken, adding she couldn't believe someone could do this to a child. The building security guard said he heard something heavy fall, but only later discovered it was a person. The security guard told police that the boy's friends looked pale and nervous as they exited the building. After their arrest, Jiang defended himself saying she had constantly verbally bullied them, which he said led to his violent actions. Jiang and Wang had been charged with murder and assault respectively. Their sentences, however, could be reduced as they have been previously diagnosed with mental disabilities. Nikki and Todd, this entire situation is just so heartbreaking. You can only imagine what the family is going through. They were actually just on the verge of going on their family trip to Disney World when this tragedy struck. And you can see here right at Peace Park where the child fell. Uh, they've already started a memorial. You see plenty of candles just lining this sidewalk right here as well as flowers. Notes like this one, uh, this little angel will be remembered. You can see here a, a note written from a child that says, sorry for your loss. And of course, reminding people to come and light a candle and leave flowers to show respect for the family. An unspeakable tragedy looming over what was supposed to be a joyful weekend for this family. Eight-year-old Justin Fernandez Pedra died after falling 12 stories from the Echo Luxury Condominiums. Police say he was playing hide-and-go-seek with his brother, and the two managed to get out of the back door of the family's penthouse apartment. They climbed to the rooftop, and the eight-year-old jumped off and landed in Peace Park right next to the building. The school resource officer at a charter elementary school nearby rushed to try and save the child. Despite all of the efforts of the police officers uh, and fire rescue to try to revive the child, unfortunately, he was pronounced deceased uh, upon arrival at Joe DiMaggio. The family was packing for their trip to Disney at the time of the tragic accident. Onlookers and students from a nearby school saw the commotion and quickly learned what had happened. The boy sadly passed away. Eric Clapton's Tears in Heaven captures the grief and heartbreak the songwriter suffered after the loss of his son, Connor. Connor was just four and a half years old when he tragically fell 53 stories from an open window where he was living with his mother in New York City. The Italian actress, Laurie Del Santo, she would become the mother of Clapton's only son, Connor. And when he was born, I was drinking. And he was really uh, the chief reason. That I, that I went back to treatment because I, I really did love this boy. And I thought, I can't, I know he's like a little baby, but he can see me and he can see what I'm doing. And I don't want, I'm tired of this. Eric suffered through strong alcohol abuse, but his desire to be close to his son sobered him up. He let his wife, Laura, take care of their son's upbringing, which she managed remarkably well. One day, Eric realized how blessed he was to have a family. He had a perfect day with his son at the circus. It was the best time of their lives to be able to spend together as father and son. Clapton came home to Lori and was frank, saying, I now understand what it means to have a child and be a father. It was the first and the last time Eric enjoyed time with Connor. He insisted on taking care of him and planned to take his son back to London. The next day, when the janitor was cleaning, Connor ran into the room full of joy. The janitor warned the nanny that the window was open. She stopped just for a second to heed what he was saying. A moment later, Lori heard her terrible screams. She rushed into the room, crying distraughtly, Where's Connor? Where's Connor? He fell out from the open window on the 53rd floor of a New York City high-rise. A few minutes later, when Clapton came home, he had no idea that Connor had fallen down to the street. He could not fathom what happened at first, and his face turned pale. He was broken. 
He went to see him again at the funeral home to say goodbye and to apologize for not being a better father. So it was for Connor that Clapton finally quit for good and vowed to be the kind of father he never had. But that was not to be. In March of 91, Clapton was in New York to visit Connor, who was living in the city with his mother. The phone rang in his hotel room. And his mother was hysteric. She was hardly able to, to make sense. Um, but she said he was dead. As soon as I enter the room and I see the window, where can he be? These are the never-before-seen images captured of him on video by his mother, Lori Del Santo. <laughs> The couple met in 1985, while Clapton, then 40 and already a guitar legend, was on tour in Italy. Lori, a young actress and model from Verona, says they decided to start a family in their first weekend together. Connor was born the next year. Oh, he was an angel, I think. <laughs> really, he was. He was beautiful, I think. Um... For the first time on camera, Lori Del Santo talks about the terrifying events of that day to international interviewer Daphne Barak, who provided ABC News with exclusive access to Lori's private videos of her son. Lori, a photographer, documented Connor's life from the beginning, but after Connor's death, she locked the tapes away, too painful to look at them again. Silly. Fifteen years later, the videos show a happy child. Connor growing to a toddler, emulating his famous father. He loved listening to Clapton's music and had budding dreams of being like the famed slow hand. I understand every kid wants to do what the father does, but uh, in this particular case, he really wanted it very badly. Although the couple was no longer together, Eric and Lori shared their child's profoundly tragic death. Clapton told Barack in 2003 he was able to work through his grief with music. I, I almost subconsciously use music for myself as a healing agent. Uh, and lo and behold, it worked. You know, I mean, I, I have got a great deal of happiness and a great deal of healing from music. Although his life was all too short, Connor's death created a greater public awareness for children's safety. He had accidentally fallen 49 floors from the window of his mother's apartment. And I remember putting the phone down and calmly walking from my hotel to that place as if nothing had happened. Uh, and I walked past the street, and this is a terrible thing of shame for me, which I'll never ever perhaps recover from. And seeing, the, uh, seeing a crowd of people and, and a paramedic van, and knowing that he was there, and walking by, and I'll punish myself forever about why didn't I run, why didn't I go to see him. And, and, and the truth is I couldn't. I was so frightened. And uh, that's tough. Would you know that this nine-year-old boy's uh, parents uh, were with him at the time. In fact, they were there for his uh, transport to the hospital. The tragic news was a wake-up call for other parents. And it just makes me really sad. I have a nine-year-old boy, um, six-year-old daughter, three-year-old daughter, and just seeing that, it's, it's very painful. Use guards on windows and safety gates on stairs. It's easy and it could prevent a terrible tragedy. Believe me, I know. Eric Clapton and Lori Del Santo traveled to England to bury their son. Just days before his death, Lori had helped young Connor with a letter to his father. Eric received a letter from Connor. He wrote to tell his father how much he loved and missed him when he wasn't around. I probably would have killed myself if I were actually a practicing alcoholic at the time of his death. And he said to me, what shall I write? And I said, well, write, I love you, Dad. And he wrote that. So when we arrived in London, he receives the, the mail, and it was, this was after the funeral, and, he, and I was actually there, and he opened up, and it was his letter. At oh, that moment, I cannot forget, forget, forget. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, 
even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job sinned not nor charged God foolishly.